Hi, my name is uh, Bernard Brault with uh, OTN uh, Systems. And uh, if you've been following this uh, video series, uh, then uh, uh, this is a follow-up on uh, SCADA system. And uh, in the past, what we've done is uh, create this uh, network, add some nodes, uh, make some LSP tunnels across the network and so on and uh, then provisioning service. One of the very important service for uh, power utilities is uh, SCADA and uh, SCADA uh, tends to be a uh, protocol that's uh, sort of a pole select type protocol. Um, even though Ethernet is becoming more and more popular uh, I think there's still a, a vast number of uh, uh, SCADA system over uh, a point to multipoint RS-232 uh, with the advantage that the uh, point of multipoint 232 is um, uh, basically is non-routable. All right, so um, let's. Uh, this is our network. This is the the core ring, and in the core ring, uh, let's say that we have the uh, uh, control center, the SCADA control center at uh, this node right here, uh, 1110, and. Uh, uh, let's also assume that the backup control center is on 1130. Uh, it could be anywhere else. I'm just picking these arbitrarily in, in the network. So uh, in this case, uh, one thing that uh, maybe we don't want to do is create a uh, RS-232 point to multipoint that would reach out to all of these nodes because it would just be too slow. Uh, if you had to pull each one of these uh, remote RTUs, assuming there's one per site here, it would just uh, take too long of a time. So, so again, we segregate the network, and what we're going to do is uh, somehow try to create a uh, RS-232 port, the control center, that basically is connected to some 20 RTUs or so. Uh, so what does that mean? Maybe a large 20 node ring? Yeah, or maybe a couple of rings. So in this case, uh, why don't we um, uh, create a service that's going to have one RS-232 port, both at the main control center and the backup control center, so both SCADA system, uh, the primary and the backup, can pull simultaneously all of the RTUs and let's say the RTUs in this particular subnet right here so I'm sort of encircling here uh, it looks like some 15 20 nodes or so all right so let's create this uh, this service um, and before we do that um, we need to make sure that we have the tunnels to reach out to that and, and we do and keep in mind that what we're going to use is RS-232 not over circuit emulation because that would be point to point typically mirrored bits or so uh, but we're going to use like a, uh, a packetized or serialized um, uh, so RS-232 byte that gets mapped directly into uh, an Ethernet frame and that eventually will be transported over Ethernet so we could do this over a, uh, a ring uh, topology here and uh, so we created a uh, ladder network as we can see here the ladder network touches both the main backup control center reaches out all the way here and it doesn't get across this tie site because it, it doesn't have two separate match nodes or two interconnect points um, so basically in order to reach out to the uh, uh, these sites right here we're gonna have to interconnect multiple tunnels and we're doing this through this tie point right here and then you know we're jumping in this uh, in this particular logical ring right here all right so uh, so it looks like uh, by the, uh, using a combination of ring one the tie site right here and ring five we will be able to reach out all of the endpoints okay so let's create the SCADA service and we're gonna call it the uh, SCADA one because we may have multiple of these um, let's say by chunks of 20 uh, RTUs so uh, SCADA 1, um, it's a serial Ethernet, uh, RS-232, let's say 9600 baud, typically. Now, of course we need to have the RS-232 module, so what I'm going to do here is, uh, is go around the system and pick port number one on the seven serial so this is a seven port card and it's a universal data module and it happens to do RS-232 as well 
All right, so let's uh, work my way around the ring. So that'll take uh, a little bit of time. So uh, uh, I'm just showing you how I'm doing this here. Oh, it looks like port number one was already taken here. Uh, that's interesting. Did we create an RS-232 service? Uh, oh yeah, that was a mirrored bit service. All right, so let's, let's use here uh, uh, port number two. Oh, that's right. We had a mirrored bit from here to there earlier. Okay, so I uh, expect the same thing's going to happen when I reach out to this. So typically, if you had a mirrored bit, you probably would... Uh, here it is. So you see port number one was already in use, so that's why it's not available. All right, let's uh, just walk our way around the ring and select port. Number one right there. And uh, all right, so to save it a little bit of time. I pause and I selected the uh, port number one, except in these two locations. Uh, the reason why oh, well, they were already in use, uh, I would probably want to use a second module. Uh, I prefer to use teleprotection over uh, its own its own card, um, and then the main control center. Pick port number one. No, sorry, that's a backup or whatever main or backup control center. All right, so so we've selected the uh, the, the, the the ports uh, for this service, and uh, the next step will be where? Where is the next step? Oh yeah, I need to select the master uh, and slave. Um, so here, E one 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 zero here uh, is going to be a uh, a master. And the master can actually talk to all the slaves. Uh, master hears the other master, uh, but slaves, you know, don't hear the other slaves' uh, response. And then the 1130 here would also be a, a secondary master. All right, so you need to have at least one master. This is why I was not able to click on next. So that's very important. So two masters, that's where the uh, SCADA master is. And then the rest of the uh, RTUs, as you can see right down here, these are the selected ports on the, uh, the modules. And with uh, two exceptions, and the exception is they're all on port number one, and the two exceptions are uh, in uh, ring, uh, somewhere around ring five, where it's port number two, because port one was already in use. So I click on next. And now, of course, it's a matter of selecting uh, the ring. So the, uh, we're gonna select the, uh, uh, ring number one, and then we need to jump onto the sub ring two, then sub ring six, the tie site, and finally uh, ring number five. And um, whoops, uh, sub ring four has one site there. No, that's fine. I'm okay. And you see, like, to make things a little easier, there is a, uh, uh, this basically tells you that this particular ring touches six of the nodes, two of the nodes, two of the nodes out of 24. So we have 24 nodes overall that are participating in this service. All right. Next step is priority. This is SCADA, so priority number four will be uh, sufficient. Uh, it's not as time sensitive as still protection, so I would prefer to reserve uh, um, priority five for protection. Uh, here's a summary. The two uh, masters, and finally all of the RTUs here shown as uh, ports hanging off the, uh, the nodes. The next step is uh, selection of pseudo wires. So we don't need to worry about this unless uh, you're actually interfacing. So here's, and we're done now. Uh, so um, this is it. Close this. And as we can see here, if I go to my network tab and highlight the uh, SCADA1 service. Let me reopen the uh, network tab. And I highlight the SCADA service right there. What I'm seeing is uh, highlighted in yellow is the tunnel and I see here that I have the uh, 
SCADA Master, Backup Patrol Center, and and as you can see, all the RTUs here hanging off on this particular service right here. All right. So um, probably what I wouldn't want to do is uh, do something similar, uh, possibly uh, doing the same thing on the second port. And I would have like one port for this group of RTUs, another port right here for this group of RTUs, and and maybe to possibly, even though I, I may have like six or seven rings, it might be preferable to keep them in a certain way. So I, I could join these uh, into one group or make a, a group of RTUs right here. Uh, really, um, uh, I mean, it's the constraint is uh, a more of a logical constraint than it is a physical constraint here. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.